You remember the Springfield tire fire that just never seems to go out? That's kind of what it feels like the modern economy is. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. And yeah, the video game industry on the whole is crumbling in 2024. And every day that goes by, it just seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. And honestly, I don't know what's going to happen to turn it around. I mean, this is an ebb and a flow. Eventually, it will come back. People will start getting rehired and it will blossom once again. But how bad is it going to get before we get there? Hit the subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for my full breakdown of the current industry of video games and how it just seems like it's never getting any better. But for this video, I wanted to more open it up to you guys to get a vibe of what you feel is going on locally in your world. In the video game industry, you keep seeing these articles, these headlines, these talking heads that are just like, this guy got let go, this company let go 600 people, this game got canceled, this studio got closed, these people aren't working here anymore, and it just seems to never end. And it kind of feels like this all started with the Embracer group. Like, what was it, like a year ago when that deal for the, the Saudi billionaire didn't come through with the deal that they planned on having? And, and then they just started reeling back after all their acquisitions and just letting everything kind of fall apart because they couldn't afford to keep it going. And once Embracer Group started unraveling, it just kind of seemed to set off a trend in the game industry of spiraling downward and letting more people go and closing more studios. Fast forward to this point, now we have Electronic Arts that's officially canceling the development of the much anticipated Star Wars first person shooter game at Respawn Entertainment. One of those games that, while I don't play all the Star Wars games out there, a first person shooter from Star Wars, from Respawn, is interesting, intriguing, dare I say a day one pickup for me was canceled and i know it's an ea game but i look at respawn as a little bit different than just a straight up ea company respawn has made some fantastic experiences over the years but things seem to be getting so bad that doesn't matter too bad so sad respawn has to can that game because ea is not going to move forward with the money to keep it on track that star wars project was originally unveiled in 2022 and was expected to be a significant addition to the star wars gaming universe especially with peter hirschman at the helm hirschman's the guy behind his leading roles at lucas arts and the co-creator of the medal of honor series is the same guy that brought a wealth of experience and his own deep understanding of star wars lore being the same guy that contributed to successful iconic titles like the original Star Wars Battlefront and The Force Unleashed. And it also coincides with EA laying off nearly 700 people company-wide. And that's just with EA. And it's been happening throughout the entire game industry, like I said at the beginning of this. I feel like, literally, you want to be a YouTuber with a career in 2024? Just talk about the latest studio closing or layoffs every single day in the game industry, and you'll have plenty to talk about. It's that depressing. It's that dire. It's that sad. Now, earlier today, I was on Twitter, and I saw Jeff Grubb write this. Stop calling it a video game crash. That implies that it's like some sort of uncontrollable force of the market. You can't have a crash, at least in the US, when the market was up 4% year over year in 2023. That's the opposite of a crash. This is execs mimicking growth by cutting costs, which is one way to look at the constant layoffs, firing, studio closures, is they want to prop their numbers up by stopping paying people and saying, look at all this money we got coming in, this revenue of all these game sales, and we have no money going out because all these people were fired. So stockholders, shareholders, everyone who cares about our company, look at how much money we have coming in now because of this residual income, which is great. Until you'll dig a little deeper and say, okay, for now you're making some money. But you also let go of everyone who made those games and they're not making games for you anymore. So in the future, you're not going to have that revenue, which I replied to Jeff Grubb saying, I'd argue what you just described is exactly what marks the beginning of a crash. To which Jeff said 4% growth 
And I'm like, yeah, just because you're making money and it's growing because you're laying people off doesn't mean that the future is not bleak. Short term, sure. Looks great. Pull the lens back and the future looks a bit more bleak. And Jeff replied saying, never said things aren't bleak, but until someone can point to a trend where people are spending significantly less on video games, you're going to have a hard time convincing me that when people say it's a crash, they're not really saying games are different than when I was 12. And he's got a very interesting perspective here because while the numbers all point to, yeah, everything seems to be going well and swimmingly in the video game industry, I would argue that's because they've put so much effort and money into the games, especially throughout the pandemic. But as that started to end and then the game started coming out, there was this huge flood of amazing AAA titles that seemed to just come at the market. It felt like every week there was just another heavy hitter after heavy hitter where I was just like, I don't have time to play any of these games. This is so many great games to play. And all those were because of the buildup of all the excess talent working on games throughout the pandemic that had to pause and no games were coming out for a little bit. And then they all started coming out at the same time. And like I said, the ebb in the flow of the industry. But now we're at a time where all those games are out and games that were announced aren't coming out. They're getting canned. They're canceled. They're stopped. The studios are closed. How are these companies going to make money in the future? And and I guess right there is my greater point in all of this. Sure, on the surface currently, with all these layoffs, firings, and studio closures, the video game industry at large is still functioning. <laughs> fine well enough like if you just go surface deep on it yeah it's you're not going to notice any problems but if you start digging you'd notice that there's a trend here that is extremely concerning and if you pair that with my video that i made the other day talking about google's genie this ai that can create video games and how all these people the developers the workers the qa that worked on these games for so many years are being let go now and you see the introduction of albeit a very remedial AI that can make very basic 2D platforming games right now. You pair those two things together and I mean, maybe the game industry will survive and maybe it will still be making money in the future, but it almost feels like a gigantic shift, a dynamic shift is happening right now where we're seeing it unfold right before our eyes. That the games are still going to be made and money is still going to be made, but the developers, the people working on these games, everyone involved in the game making process in the industry may not have their job when it comes back to making games in the future. They may be replaced by something far cheaper. And I think that's the greater concern in all of this. Yeah, I could talk about how the AI doesn't really involve human emotions and can't make original storylines. But again, we're talking about the first edition. This is the worst the AI is ever going to be. And the video game industry seems to be at a crossroads right now where the Nintendo Switch 2 was supposedly ready to come out years ago, as new reports are saying, but has now been supposedly delayed, even though it was never announced, to early 2025. And we hear about a PlayStation 5 Pro. We have no idea what Microsoft is doing with their all digital Xbox series. It's just it's a very complicated time in the industry. So I guess I want to just pass it off to you guys and get your sense of what you think is going on. Is this a crash? Is this a correction? Is this perfectly fine and everyone is much ado about nothing right now because it's kind of a slow news day? I don't know. I'm kind of not at the all about it's a crash phase, but it could get there. That's, that's where I'm at with this. It could go one of two ways, obviously, but I don't think anything is guaranteed or all but certain right now. I feel like it's right on the cusp of going one direction, and one of those directions is very scary. I'm going to leave it there. Check out SmashJT.com for the full article. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing. Smash Smash, 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 smash,
Change, change.